Tonight, the woman behind homosexual law reform 30 years ago. Hello everyone, this is Gay Talk Tonight. It is 30 years since the New Zealand Parliament decriminalised sex acts between consenting males in New Zealand. Since then we've seen anti-discrimination legislation enacted and legal recognition of same-sex marriage. In this episode I interview Fran Weil, the courageous politician who pushed through homosexual law reform 30 years ago. Fran Weil, wonderful to talk to you. I just want to take you back, obviously, and what was the reason that you decided to take on what turned out to be quite a big battle? I was lobbied when I was first selected as a candidate and asked if I would support it, and I said of course I would, and then the, a kind of a second question was thrown in, would you be prepared to sponsor a bill if no, if no other MP would do it? And I said, oh, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> Not thinking much about it, I have to say. And then after the election, uh, it appeared that nobody else was interested or wanting to. And so I agreed I would do it. And I thought I was in a pretty liberal electorate then, Wellington Central. I was a young woman, and so people wouldn't say it was self-interest. Um, so I said, yes, I would do it. I felt strongly that it was a gap in our law and it needed to be changed. Um, so I agreed to do it. Did you have any idea at that stage how divisive it would become and how long it would take to pass? I had no idea at the beginning what it would be like. I don't think any of us did actually. It would, it, like all hell broke loose basically in New Zealand. And, and, it, and it broke loose pretty quickly, almost as soon yes. as the bill was in. The, the yes. opponents were rallying it. And again, yes. what, what was that like from your perspective? Well, it was, I think we were unprepared, frankly, at the beginning. And so I do recall the headline in the Evening Post was Gay Sex at 16. And I thought, and it was right across the front page. And I thought, oh, it would have been nice if it had just been a little paragraph somewhere. And that was kind of an indication of what it was going to be like. <laughs> And so, um, yeah, that was what started it all. I mean, the, um, particularly the fundamentalist Christian churches were completely up in arms and they were able to call on a lot of resource from the US. And so they had money, they had people sent over to preach and they had resource material. We had to start our kind of um, campaign from then. And I must say people did rally pretty quickly, but um, it, we were behind, at, to start with we were behind. And no I guess doubt. that's because you didn't expect this kind of reaction. Well I suppose if we thought seriously we would have known it was going to be not very positive but it was much more over the top than I thought it would be. There were um, a lot of people, high profile people, that, mm. including MPs who were against it, mm. I'm thinking John Banks, yes. Norm Jones, Jeff Braybrook, yes, indeed. Eva, you know, the Salvation Army. Yes. Was there anybody that was worse than the others? What stands out from your mind uh, in terms of the opposition? I think um, some of them were um, pretty appalling in, in how they verbalised things. Norm was terrible actually and I remember at one stage during the campaign I was sharing a talk back studio with him. We had to share the same microphone and so I was sitting right next to him like that and I think all oh, this abuse used to pour out of him and I thought God how can you live with this if this is what's going on in your mind. It was pretty bad actually and we had a lot of that actually not just we had that in the rallies of course which which they put on all around the country just abuse terrible stuff coming out um, and we also had it in Parliament actually every Wednesday night I had to kind of gear myself up to go and sit and listen to all this um, terrible cant and um, some of them were much more, I suppose you'd say, gentlemanly, <laughs> but there were there, some of it, a lot of it was pretty bad, and it was designed, of course, specifically to stir people up, to pander and reinforce stere pander to and reinforce stereotypes, and to get people scared. It was a classic technique. I mean, it wasn't, you know, new. It's happened before on many occasions in many places, but. To see that all happening here was pretty scary and um, 
to see it happening just to other New Zealanders was, was terrible. Did it have a personal toll on you, yourself? Oh, it wasn't very good for me. I mean, I had three little kids. I was a mum with solo mum with three kids, and I was a bit worried about them. But I, they did go to schools where there was a lot of support for it. That was great. So they weren't harassed at school or anything. I was worried that um, some nutter would come and throw a bomb through the front of window of the house, that sort of thing, because I got a lot of hate mail. Um, and I did try and keep my family circumstances private. I've always tried to do that in my political career so that, uh, you know, people wouldn't know and wouldn't, there wouldn't be other targets. But, you know, of course I was concerned, um, and for my staff as well. But for me, the heroes to me were the gay men who came out because they were the ones who had most to lose if we lost. And in fact, so they were kind of putting their, themselves, their future on the line by doing that. What was the impact of AIDS? Because it was, it, 85, it mm. really hit the headlines. Mm. So, mm. so how did that influence things? Well, we were really worried. And of course, the opposition used it to say, look, if you have, if this is legalised, you'll just have people, you know, copulating in the streets kind of, and everybody will get AIDS, you know, it'll just be, <laughs> it will be the most terrible epidemic sweeping through New Zealand and all because we're legalising gay sex. And we just could see that the um, treatments and clinics and care that was being set up were never going to work while gay men were criminalised and weren't prepared to come to anything that had any semblance of authority about it or officialdom because it was too risky for them, actually. Um, and so we had to get this through. That was one of the a number of reasons why, in fact, this became imperative to get through at that stage. Um, we, we knew that we could never fight AIDS adequately with um, with gay um, homosexual activity criminalised, and you can see, in fact, in other countries where that is still the case, that we were right. Mm -hmm. So we knew we had to get it through for that. There were other reasons as well which were pretty pressing, but that was a big one at the time. Was there a time when you were fairly sure it was going to happen? We were never fairly sure because people are fickle in Parliament, and we had five votes, and we thought we had the votes, but you just don't know. In the end, there were two people from, they were actually National Party members who knew in their hearts and their minds that this needed to go through, but they thought their electorates would punish them. They stood at the back of the eyes lobby, and when they saw we had enough votes, they went and voted against it. Uh, well, okay, um, actually, it wouldn't have hurt them at all to have voted for it, electorally. Um, they would have voted for it, I think, had we needed the votes, but we didn't. Um, it would have been great to get a more healthy majority, but it was enough, it got through. And of course then things changed so fast after that that it all became, so what? So now, 30 years later, you've got one and a half generations, to, almost two generations of people who weren't even born then and thinking, so what was all the fuss about? And I agree, what was all the fuss about? There are some in our community who call Fran Wilde Saint Fran for all she did for us. And while many, many people were involved in the fight for gay rights in New Zealand, we owe a great deal of gratitude to our Saint Fran. Thanks for watching. Please share this video and I'll see you again soon.